my low carb chicken pesto pasta went viral. So I thought today I'm going to bring you something similar. Hi, I'm Jill from thisoldgal.com and today on In the Kitchen with Jill, I'm going to show you how to make a one pot dish, creamy chicken pesto penne in the Instant Pot. Just a few ingredients and you've got a whole meal in under 15 minutes. Now I'm going to show you some tips and tricks while we're tasting it at the end, so make sure you stay around to check out my tips and tricks. This is so delicious. It's going to be creamy, it's going to be hot, it's going to be homey. You're going to absolutely love this recipe. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, so are you ready to cook? Let me get this tied. So you, with this one pot easy recipe, you can use either dark meat chicken or white meat chicken, whichever is your preference. And I'm going to just cut the chicken breast, we're using breast, into strips like tenders. It's much cheaper than buying chicken on your own. I'll cut it. Oh, thanks. All right, so first thing into the pot, you want to slice up an onion. Let's put it in the pot. Next, we're going to put in some butter. Next goes into the pot is fresh garlic. Just dump that right in. Spread that all out. The next thing you want to put in is, I'm going to use, I like to use this better than bouillon base rather than chicken broth. It's just easier to control. So I'm going to put in about a tablespoon. Put that right in there. Mix that all together. All right, so now you're, go you're going to want to add your pasta. So I'm going to put that right in. All right, now make sure your pasta is just spread around pretty evenly. All right, now we want to put some salt. You always want to salt your pasta water. So we're going to put in one teaspoon of sea salt. That's half, and here is one teaspoon now. All right, just sprinkle that around. Once that's in, we're going to add three and a half cups of fresh water. That's going to mix with the bouillon base we put in there and get a great, rich flavor. So push that in there so your pasta is mostly under the water, which is fine. Since I'm using the white meat chicken and pasta is going to cook faster in this instance, the chicken goes in next. So that's two pounds of chicken. Just put that in there. Try to spread it out just like that. All right. All right, so on top of the chicken, I'm adding some pesto sauce. Just pour that right over, just like that. Okay. And spread that out. Doesn't that look great? The last thing we're going to do before we pressure cook, I'm going to add some borson cheese. I've cut it up. I'm going to just put it on top into cubes, just like that. Right, keep it on top. And that's it. All right, I'm going to put the lid on now. I'm going to come down and I'm going to push the pressure valve away and I'm going to set the time to cook. Now, the time to cook depends on the brand of pasta you use. I like to use the Dikecha or the Checo, however you say it. So look in the notes below for my rule of thumb of pasta and check your box of pasta and that's going to be your cook time. So whatever brand you use will be different or maybe different, some are the same. So while that's cooking, I'm going to cut up some cherry tomatoes and I've already got my spinach. So we'll as soon as this is done, we're going to open the pot and I'll show you what it looks like. So it's been five minutes. I'm going to release the pressure. While the pressure is releasing, I've been cutting up the tomatoes and we will add them into the pot as soon as we open the lid. So you just want to cut your tomatoes in half or if you prefer, you could have actually put them in before pressure cooking. Depends on if you like them really cooked or if you wanted them more on the raw-ish side for a fresher pop of flavor. 
Okay, so the pin is dropped. We're going to open the lid away from us. That looks great. You can see the chicken is on top. The cheese is in there. We're going to melt. We're going to just mix it all together. It's nice and al dente. Like that. So we're going to add in the tomatoes and get this mixed in nicely. Add them right in. Just like that. And we're going to add in some spinach. Use as much or as little as you like. I'm going to use probably about five handfuls because we like spinach. You just mix that in. And you want to mix that in as I'm putting this in. So Ed's going to mix it in. I'll try. It's hard to mix. It's a pretty yeah. full pot. There you go. And I took really big handfuls. That was what? More, more like three. Yeah. It's going to wilt down really well. And that's all you do. All right, so we're going to continue mixing this up, and I'm going to serve us each a plate and let you see what it looks like. Also, I'll give you some tips, too. Oh. <laughs> He's all ready. All right, so here we go. Put some on a plate. Are you ready? It looks so good. We're going to give this a taste now. Here goes. Yum. And a good tomato. Mmm. Is it good? Mmm. It's really creamy and I love the pop of the tomato. Now you can put the tomato in after like I did or you can put it in before and just cook a little bit more. Also, here's a few notes for you. If you're going to use dark meat chicken, you're going to want good. If you can use dark meat chicken, you're going to want to put that in below the pasta. For the white meat chicken, you're going to want to put that above the pasta. The reason being is that Things that take longer to cook should always be closer to the bottom. So since dark meat takes just a minute longer than the white meat, you want to put that in first. That's why I put the pasta in, the, the chicken in after. How is it? It's good. It's got three of my favorite things in here. Which are? Well, <laughs> pasta. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. Spinach. Spinach, yes. Well, the borson cheese makes it really super duper creamy. It's one of my favorite cheeses to buy to put on different uh, crackers and stuff. They come in a bunch of flavors. There's also another brand that I cannot remember the name. They usually come in packages of three as well. If you can't find the Borson cheese at your store, take some cream cheese and mix it with some Italian spices, maybe a little bit of garlic and a little butter, and use that. It works pretty much the same way. It'll be nice and creamy and very, very rich. I hope you don't want any more of this. <laughs> A chicken. I hope you don't want any more of this either. Because I, this I do. Fun. I actually would like another bite. I like the All spinach. Right. I want some more. Just one. So I'm going to show you. Spinach, chicken, and... Doesn't look pretty? Tomato. Tomato. I can't get the tomato. Tomato. The tomato. Come here, tomato. mister. Tomato. Mm. I, I didn't know if you had a whole motor. You guys are going to love this so, so much. This recipe, I'm choking. Make sure you chew the spinach before choking. I want to slide down my throat. So this recipe, just like all others, can be found on my blog, thisoldgal.com. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step pictures and directions, always. And you can follow me on Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram at thisoldgalcooks. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button or bell. And... Thank you guys so much for joining me today on In the Kitchen with Jill. Bye. We'll see you next time. Pasta la vista. <laughs> hey everybody, Ed here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow us on social media. We'll see you in the next video.